Oh man. I'm a little irritated right now, y'all. I'm a little irritated right now. Um Pistons should have won this game, man. Pistons should have won this game. Welcome back to another episode, y'all. We're gonna break this game down. The Pistons had so many opportunities to win this game. And they didn't take advantage of them. So many mistakes in this game. Another gut-wrenching punch. For the Detroit Pistons tonight against the Houston Rockets. They lose tonight 99 to 101 in a thriller at home in the game they should have won. And there were just so many mistakes. The Pistons shot themselves in the foot so many times in so many different ways throughout so many different stretches of this game. So let's get to it, man. Once again, the Pistons came out sluggish to start this game. They went down 11 to 2. Quick timeout. Again, like this is this has kind of been a thing. The last two games they got off to better starts, but prior to that, slow starts, not ready to start a tip off, reacting instead of being proactive, right? Responding instead of being the one to punch first. When you're at home, you gotta punch first. You gotta punch first. It's it's the mentality. And you gotta give the Rockets credit, man. You gotta give the Rockets credit. They are a very physical basketball team. Very physical basketball team. They have good defenders. And they have a good coach. I will say this. The referees were letting them play tonight, man. The refs were letting these boys play tonight. Um, very physical game. Um, so many times the refs swallowed the whistle, but it was on both sides, right? Man, this, this was just one of those games you have to get. They had so many opportunities, man. The Pistons are not playing complete games right now. They had a first quarter lull right out the gate. And they also had a third quarter lull where they allowed Houston to kind of take control of the game and they were playing catch up the rest of the way. And I said this at the end of my last video. I said, if the Pistons want to win this game, they have to play four quarters of basketball. That's exactly what I said. I said, you're not going to be able to get away playing how you did against the Hawks. And because you're more talented, you know, you get the win. You win off talent. That's not going to happen with a team like this. They bring it for four quarters. And they brought it tonight for four quarters. They didn't execute for four quarters, but they were physical all night long. They had so many offensive rebounds in this game. They had so many deflections in this game. They were just more physical. They were the more physical, locked-in basketball team from beginning to end. And that was the difference. The Pistons can hang with Houston. The Pistons can hang with the Rockets. They can definitely play with this team. But you're not going to win if you are not playing complete games. You just, it's just not going to happen. And I don't mean shooting the ball well every night. I mean, just giving that effort. I mean, not being lazy with the ball, not being lazy on defense, not assuming your teammates going to get the rebound. Like those are the kind of things that Houston doesn't do. And winning teams don't do that. You have to make sure that you are playing hard, finishing possessions, not just playing good individual defense, not just playing good team defense, but securing the rebound. It was so many times in this game, the Pistons did not secure the rebound when they had a chance to take the lead or they had a chance to cut into the lead or they had a chance to extend the lead they just kept shooting themselves in the foot by not finishing possessions and not finishing games and that's what happened tonight this was this was the most frustrating loss to me all season even more frustrating than the charlotte game because it was just mental lapses it was too many mental lapses in this game if you watch this game you can see the pistons can hang with this team they can hang with this team the rockets are a good basketball team I'm not taking any credit away from them. They're a good basketball team. They're well coached by Ime Udoka. They play hard. They play together, right? They're a good basketball team. But the Pistons, talent-wise, are able to hang with them. They just didn't take advantage of opportunities. They just did not play a full game. And you're not going to be the team like this who brings it on both ends unless you play a full game. And the Pistons learned that the hard way tonight. You know, in previous games, they were able to you know, have these lows and because they were more talented than teams like, you know, the Nets or the Sixers or the Hawks, they could just get back into the game. They can kick it in the gear and get back into the game. Not when you play a team like this. You can't do that. You cannot do that. So we're going to get into individual plays. We're going to get into individual stats. But I just kind of want to go over some things that I observed tonight from this game. As I mentioned, this game was very physical. J.B. Bickerstaff and Ime Udoka are both defensive minded coaches. And I have to say the refs let them play. The refs really did let these boys play. It was a very physical game. Even with that, though, some fouls, just, just, they just completely missed. You know, K got a tech. 
because he was fouled and it was blatant and they didn't call it. And Cade is just not usually crying wolf. He doesn't just bark at officials just to bark, right? So some fouls were just completely missed. Um, but overall, I have to say this was the kind of game that you'd like to see. This was a very, this was very much a throwback basketball game, right? It was a very ground and pound. It wasn't up and down. It wasn't all these fast break plays, even though there was a play like that that we'll get to. But it wasn't that type of game. This was not a finesse basketball game. These are not finesse basketball teams. These are physical, grind it out, ground and pound, smash mouth, punch you in the face teams. And the refs let them play. But the Pistons just did not match their energy from beginning to end. They did not. They did in stretches. They did in points. They did when their backs were against the wall. But that's not how you win games. You have to play complete basketball games. Okay, I will say this too, man. Asar Thompson was missed tonight. Asar Thompson was missed tonight. Jalen Duren was also missed too, and we'll get to that. But Asar Thompson was missed tonight. His perimeter defense was missed tonight. And to be honest, I actually enjoyed watching his twin brother Ahmed play. Just because I want to see Asar Thompson playing basketball. And that's the closest thing I'm going to get to that right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was nice to see Amin playing. But I really can't wait till Asar gets back because he's going to be a critical piece to our team going forward. So I have to give the Pistons some credit because they were able to hang with a good basketball team without Asar Thompson and Jalen Duren. But at the same time, if they play four quarters of basketball, they win this game. Plain and simple. They win this basketball game. And they didn't. It was too many mental lapses down the stretch. Too many bonehead plays. Too many impatient plays, not letting plays finish, and just laziness, man. Just laziness at times. So let's get this out of the way, right? Jalen Green had a post to dunk on Kate, right? It was a fast break, and Kate had his back turn. He was guarding, I think it was Tari Eason who had the ball. Tari Eason dropped it off, and as soon as Kate turned around, Jalen Green was going up for a dunk, and he caught a body, right? Nice dunk. It's going to be all over all the socials, Bleacher Report, ESPN, Sports Center, sideline sources. It's going to be everywhere, and that's fine. But I will say this about Jalen Green. It's one thing to have a chip on your shoulder, but it's another thing to get too caught up in individual battles. You know what I'm saying? I understand he wanted to go first overall. I understand that. You know, I, I get all of that. But to me, he just, I don't know. He, he just, he comes off like a type of player who, in my opinion, like, I feel like if the Pistons would have won this game, his poster dunk in his mind would have meant more than the outcome of the game. Right, they did win the game, right? So I can't even I can't I can't even fault them on that. But sometimes I just wonder about his mentality as far as what's most important to him. But I must say K did clap back, right? Uh, after that happened, you know, K had a few plays where he was being guarded by Jalen Green individually, and you could just see that Jalen can't guard him. K was frying him all game. It was one play where he had a dribble drive and he had Jalen all turned around looking goofy on his way to an one. <laughs> so they play two different types of games. We understand that Jalen Green is going to look for that poster dunk every time he gets an opportunity. He's an emotional player, but Kay's more focused on getting the win, getting his teammates involved. He's not really focused on the individual matchups and he's not going to allow himself to get caught up in that. So he just continued to play his game and he was a big reason as to why we were even in this game from start to finish. But we'll get to that later. The end of this game was so gut wrenching, man. There were so many opportunities where it was a one-point game and the Pistons played good defense and they couldn't secure the rebound. They let Sengun get the offensive rebound or K wouldn't grab. K had an easy rebound. I don't know if he misjudged the ball, but he had an easy defensive rebound he didn't grab. And I was just kind of confused on what happened there. But I'm not faulting him for this game at all. He was one of the main reasons we had a chance to win this game. But it was just those plays down the stretch, man, where you just have to make that play. You have to grab that rebound. You have to get that stop. You can't turn that over. You have to make that shot. You have to make the plays in the crucial moments. And the Pistons as a whole did not do that tonight. I will say this too. I feel that Houston is a little bit ahead of the Pistons as far as their learning curve. The Rockets players have had more time to get acclimated with each other and with their coach. We talk about it all the time. We know last year Houston added some veterans to their team, to a very young team. They added Fred Van Fleet. They added Jeff Green, different guys to their squad. And that's what helped their young guys really develop. Well, the Pistons did that this year. So they have more new faces plus a new coach to get used to as opposed to houston who already has their coach who already has their personnel so they have more time to get used to playing together and the pistons still should have won this game that's the encouraging piece for me the pistons were down two of their main guys they're still getting acclimated they're only 10 games in with this new team so those are positives to take away that they're even still in this game but you can't overlook the negatives and we're going to get to some more negatives too because there are quite a few in this game tonight Jaden ivy struggled man Jaden Ivey really struggled in this game tonight. Um, it wasn't for a lack of effort. It was just so many plays that he didn't make the right play. Where he would try to do too much and he would turn it over. The defense would collapse and he would turn it over. Or he would take a bad shot. I think there were two shots in the fourth quarter where he got him blocked by Tyree Eason. Um, instead of maybe slowing it down and trying to find a better shot. 
Um, and that, that was partially probably because he only had eight points tonight. He had a quiet game. We'll get to his stats later, but he had a quiet game. And I think he was just trying to get it going in that fourth quarter, but it just wasn't there. It just wasn't there in the cost of Pistons. Some big possessions there in the fourth quarter. So this is probably Jaden's worst game of the season. He didn't shoot the ball well. He didn't make great decisions, um, especially in the clutch, you know, and that happens sometimes, right? But this is definitely a game that Jaden needs to learn from. I'm not going to be too hard on him because overall this season, he's really played great and he's really showed much improvement. But tonight was just not his night. In the third quarter, the Pistons were down and it, it looked like it was going to get ugly. But I got to give credit to Tim Hardaway Jr., and Malik Beasley. They came in and, and cut a 12-point lead down to about four in about a minute or two. So I have to give them credit. They really made timely shots for us. THJ continues to play hard on the defensive end, which I love to see. He's not a clamper, but he's always going to bring the effort. So that was good to see as well. So those two guys in that quarter really revived the Pistons a little bit and gave them some life going into that fourth quarter. The end of the game, man, was so tough. So late in the game, the Rockets were up by one. Pistons play good defense. They forced Houston to a bad shot. K got the rebound. As he was falling out of bounds, he's trying to find somebody. And Tobias is there, but he's not pursuing the ball. It's kind of similar to football. When you run a route, if the ball is coming to you late, you run back to the ball. You don't wait for the ball to come to you. And Tobias waited for the ball to come to him. And as a result, Tari Eason snuck in, got the steal, and got the dunk. Like you, Those are the lazy plays I'm talking about. Those are the plays where you can't expect somebody else to do it. You have to be the one to go do it. Go get the basketball. And when I say lazy, I don't mean they're not trying. I just mean they're not giving max effort. In that moment, you have to secure the basketball. The most important thing is getting the rebound. If you see your teammate falling out of bounds trying to get you the ball, you have to know that the Rockets defenders see that as well. You have to be aware of that. You have to go get the basketball. He didn't get the basketball. They stole it. They dunk it. They go up three. Those kind of plays were happening all night for the Pistons. They just didn't finish defensive possessions. I don't know how many offensive rebounds Shangun got tonight. He's a low. He's a low. Man, he's, he's, in my opinion, the best player. And Stu was doing all he could, but he was just a load, man. He was a load. And he and the Pistons just could not keep him off the boards. So getting back to this game, right? After that possession where Tari Eason stole the ball and put the Rockets up three. So the Pistons are down three. K has the ball, and he's fouled by Fred Van Fleet. He makes the first one. They're down two. He intentionally misses the second one, which I think caught Houston off guard because they kind of seemed shell-shocked when it happened. Nobody really reacted. And I think Jaden Ivey secured the rebound and got the ball. Took a tough shot from the corner. It missed. Stu kept it alive, and the ball fell to Tobias Harris, and he gets fouled and goes to the line. Down two with a chance to tie. I hate to say this, guys. I'm not even trying to be negative. I just, I just something just told me he was going to miss a free throw. I'm sorry, man. Like, and that's I'm not I'm not showing the lack of confidence in these guys or anything. It just had that feel, man. It just had that feel like something's gonna go wrong here. And I felt like we just weren't going to tie the score. And, and that's terrible, right? That's that's a bad feeling. But I'm just being honest, man. I I've been watching basketball 30 years. I, I kind of have a pulse on how these things kind of go late in games. And I just had a feeling that just one of the two was not gonna fall. And you can just hear the fans at LTA just so frustrated with that just so upset and bothered like come on bro just make two free throws and he missed the second one on purpose the Pistons couldn't secure it game over this was so frustrating man like and once again we talk about making the plays that is a play you have to make if you're at the free throw line down two you have to make both free throws man you have to as a veteran you can't miss that free throw I'm sorry you can't listen I understand that Tobias is playing hard on the defensive end i'm not taking that away from him but at the end of the game when it's just you in the rim you have to knock down those free throws man you gotta send this game to overtime at home you have to you're literally giving them the game otherwise that is so deflating man that was so deflating and it doesn't help him that he's already started out the gate slow this season offensively it just adds insult to injury so very very tough game man um, this was a game the Pistons could have won for sure. They just had to do a better job of closing quarters, closing possessions, and closing games. So the effort is there. It's just not there consistently. Last year, the effort wasn't there consistently. And they were getting blown off the floor by the third quarter so many nights, right? So at least that's not happening. These games are close, but it is so gut-wrenching when you have a chance to win these games and you lose more of these games than you win that are close. I just want to see the Pistons execute down the stretch late in games. And it's not going to happen right away. Because these guys are still young, they're still growing together, they're still learning each other. But I really hope the Pistons do not forget this game too quickly. The mental breakdowns and lulls during games has to improve. It can't happen. You're literally allowing the team to get back into a game. 
and finishing possessions, man, and just going all out and not relying on your teammate to make the play. Just go make the play. Just go make the play, man. Go get that rebound. Go make that. Go get that rebound. Knock those free throws down. Get that top out. Like, don't rely on your teammate. You just do it. Just do it yourself. And it's so frustrating because I've mentioned in previous games that as a whole, how the Pistons have been crashing the glass as a team. I've talked about the guards and the wings, how they've been crashing the glass, right? Tonight, it just was not there. Everybody was ball watching. When the shot would go up, everybody's ball watching. Nobody's moving to the basket. Other than Isaiah Stewart, man, nobody was really just on the glass tonight. Paul Reed filled in admirably and did what he could. He fouled out in this game in the fourth quarter, but it just wasn't enough effort on the boards, man. They were getting way too many offensive rebounds in this game, and it really, really hurt the Pistons tonight, man. So let's go to the box score, right? K played a really good game today, man. 26 points, eight rebounds, nine assists, four turnovers on 10 for 21 shooting, right? So the four turnovers is not bad. I'm okay with that. If you have nine, 10 assists, I can live with four turnovers. He shot 50%, shot two for four from three, 50%, four out of six from the free throw line in 36 minutes. And he really was the main guy that kept the Pistons in this game, especially early on when the Pistons were just stuck in the mud. Isaiah Stewart was on the glass. He was getting offensive rebounds. He was playing really good defense. He had a few blocks tonight. Isaiah Stewart did his thing, man. I don't really ever have a problem with Stu because you're not always gonna get the scoring. It's not always gonna be glamorous. He may have a bad shooting night, but the effort is always going to be there. I can't recall one game this season where I said Stu didn't play hard tonight or Stu wasn't on the boards. When I talk about finishing plays and finishing possessions and being the guy to go do it, I'm never talking about Stu because he is consistent. He is consistent every single game. But getting back to K, right? K played a great game. He really kept the Pistons alive in that first quarter, in that first half. He was really getting whatever he wanted offensively. He was efficient. I have no issue tonight whatsoever with K. Like he was not the reason that we lost this game. Jaden Ivey, I mentioned him, and he struggled. He had eight points, seven rebounds, two assists, six turnovers. So it just was not a good game for him. He shot four for 15 from the field, 0 for four from three. He's right, no free throws. So everything that I've mentioned is an anomaly for him. Everything I mentioned is out of the ordinary for him, right? He did have seven rebounds, so he was trying to get on the glass. But other than that, he just, he just didn't give you much. He shot about 25% from the field. He didn't hit a three which we've talked about his three-point shooting all season long, how great it's been. It wasn't there tonight. And you're going to have games like this, man. You're going to have games where you are just off. And this was one of those games for Jaden Ivey. Isaiah Stewart, we talked about him, and he has 16 points, eight rebounds, one assist, one steal, two blocks, one turnover on seven for nine shooting, two for two from the line. I have no issues whatsoever with Stu. You get 16 points from Stu and eight boards, that's a plus game for him. And he also gave you a steal, assist, and two blocks. One turnover. Like, he he is who he is, and he's going to be who he's going to be. And I want to say this too, man. Alperen Shingun is a really good basketball player. He literally is a baby Jokic. He is Houston's best player, and I, don't, and I don't think it's close. 27 points on 11 for 17 shooting for him. 10 boards. Offensively, he just plays so much like Jokic. He's not the most athletic guy, but he's crafty, man, and he's very smart. He's a smart basketball player. He doesn't hurt his team. And he's a very good rebounder. He has so many shots, especially in that first quarter, man. It just, everything was dropping. Everything was falling. And it wasn't due to lack of defense. Stu was playing good defense on him all night. But he just was just knocking down shots, knocking down shots. Late in the shot clock, doing the Joker, dirt and the whiskey fadeaway. With two seconds left in the shot clock. And you see Stu playing good defense. Stu's looking like this. And the shot goes in. He's just like, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do, right? So he's a really good basketball player, man. So I'm going to give Stu credit because he played tough on him. And he still got it going for himself offensively. But Stu, Stu is Stu, man. He's always going to create more opportunities for you. He has so many tap outs tonight. He had, a, he had one tap out in the fourth quarter when the Pistons were down, I think, six. And the ball popped out to Tobias Harris for open three. That's three points for Harris, but it's really three points for Stu for getting that extra possession. So he played a really good game. If we get that from him all year, it'll be a very, very good season for Isaiah Stewart. Tim Hardaway Jr. had 10 points, four rebounds, two assists, one steal, three for 10 shooting, two for six from three. So he didn't have a great game. Um, he didn't shoot the ball well, but he made timely shots there in that third quarter when the Pistons really needed them. The Pistons were down 12 points, like I mentioned, and he and Malik Beasley both hit two threes apiece to get the Pistons right back into this game. So he didn't play great. Um, we could have used a little bit more scoring. He gave us defensive effort, and he gave us timely buckets when we needed them. Tobias Harris, man, he struggled. He struggled. Nine points, eight rebounds, one assist, three steals, two blocks. So he did some things. But I need more than nine points in 35 minutes. I need more than five shots. I mean, I, I just I just need more. And if you're going to do that, 
if you're only going to have five shots and nine points, at the end of the game, I need you to have at least 11 points going into overtime. You have to make those free throws. You, you just, I know I've said it already, but in that crucial situation, you can't, you just can't miss those. You can't. He wasn't looking for his offense. And the thing about it is that when he did look for his offense, he was able to take advantage, right? There was a few plays where he was posting up Dylan Brooks and he abused him. So I'm kind of curious as to why he only had five shots tonight because he made three of them. But once again, he has to give us more. If he had a bad shooting night, like if, if he was 0 for 5 to start and he knew he didn't have it going, okay, I'm okay with you trying to get other guys involved and trying to make an impact in other ways. But he only took five shots and made three of them. So I need more. He's got to kick it up. And if he has an average game, the Pistons win. He's, he just has to be better. All right, moving on. Uh, Malik Beasley, he played well. He had 15 points, two rebounds, three assists, one steal, three turnovers, five for 12 shooting, four of nine for three. In 27 minutes. So Beasley played well too. Like I mentioned, he hit some very crucial shots to get the Pistons back into it. Four for nine from three. I'll take that all day long. That's 40 plus percent. Give me that. Beasley played well, man. He's been playing well. So hopefully he can keep that up. Paul Reed played admirably in Jalen Duran's absence. He had six points, four rebounds, one assist, one block, one turnover in 15 minutes. So he didn't play a ton and he fouled out early. He really struggled with guarding Alperin Shingoon as most guys do, but it wasn't for a lack of effort. You know, he used all six of his fouls. He made both of his shots, two for two from the field, two for two from the free throw line as well. So he played well. He just was in foul trouble and he really struggled guarding Sangoon. So Jalen Duran's presence was missed tonight, especially on the boards. When the Pistons were out rebounded 53 to 46 in this game, um, 17 to 11 on the offensive glass. So if Jalen Duran is playing in this game, I think that's a little bit different. And I think that was part of the reason why the Pistons didn't win this game tonight. It just wasn't enough physicality, man. It just wasn't enough. So the Pistons now moved to four and seven on the season. The next game comes against the Miami Heat on Tuesday and I believe that'll be an in-season tournament game hopefully the Pistons can bounce back and get some get back against the heat play four quarters of basketball and get a good win at home but there was a ton in this basketball game that we could have talked about so what did you see in this game that stood out to you that I may have missed leave it down below in the comments man and let's talk about it be sure to like the video thank you to everybody who continues to support the channel I really appreciate it and I appreciate you all hanging with your boy and as always Detroit versus everybody peace I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop We headed straight to the top in the low I gotta face it I got no time to wait